You're listening to Scaling Up Services, where we speak with entrepreneurs, authors, business experts, and thought leaders to give you the knowledge and insights you need to scale your service-based business faster and easier. And now, here is your host, business coach, Bruce Eckfeld. Are you a CEO looking to scale your company faster and easier? Check out Thrive Roundtable. Thrive combines a moderated peer group mastermind, expert one-on-one coaching, access to proven growth tools, and a 24-7 support community. Created by Inc. award-winning CEO and certified scaling up business coach, Bruce Eckfeldt, Thrive will help you grow your business more quickly and with less drama. For details on the program, visit Eckfeldt.com slash thrive. That's E-C-K-F-E-L-D-T dot com slash thrive. Welcome, everyone. This is Scaling Up Services. I'm Bruce Eckfeldt. I'm your host. And our guest today is Steve Gordon. Steve is an author. He's written The Unstoppable Referrals or Unstoppable Referrals. He's also written The Exponential Network Strategy, Master in Helping Service Businesses Grow, Masters in Helping Figure Out How to Get Referrals, How to Grow Business. This is a perfect podcast for this audience. I'm really excited to have this conversation with Steve, learn about his background, how he learned to be a master at this. He wasn't always. I'll give you a hint. And then we're going to talk about what leaders can do in service-based businesses to increase their sales, increase their success on developing revenues, getting the word out there, getting more business, uh, a key part of growth and successfully scaling a business. With that, Steve, welcome to the program. Hey, Bruce. uh, Thanks for having me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, um, you know, I must say, I would say probably 90% of the business leaders that I talk to hate business development in general. The other 10% love it. And there's very few people in between. (laughs) Um, what a, let, let's talk about your background first, because I think that's a, it's, a, it's a fascinating background about how you even just got into this whole category, this whole subject of sales and marketing and referrals and how to build business. Uh, and then we can talk about what you do now. I love the, the, the content you've developed, the books, the podcast, um, lots of good nuggets. Um, but let's start with, with you and your background. Tell us the story. Well, first, I, I, I'm a little disappointed you gave away my secret. Yeah. You, you said I, wa- <laughs> I wasn't always good at uh, you know this referral and business development stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know. That, that blew my cover. Uh, no, <laughs> nobody ever starts off yeah, exactly. good at that. We didn't come out of the womb that yeah. way. Um, and I certainly didn't either. So my background, um, I, I went to college and got a, a technical degree, a uh, really tiny little discipline of, of engineering. Probably nobody ever has ever heard of it. It's called geomatics. <laughs> Interesting, but if yeah. You've, yeah, if you've ever used Google Maps to get somewhere, then you can thank somebody who has that kind of educational background. Yeah. Um, but I, I was a 10th employee at uh, the firm I went to work for out of college and a uh, small firm. Um, at the time, it was just a local firm and I uh, didn't realize it at the time, but I had been hired as the exit plan for the founder. And he kind of took me under his wing and, and mentored me. And, and I was really, frankly, just plain lucky to have that opportunity. And yeah. uh, four, four years after getting there, he called me and said, you know, I was actually at, at home with, uh, the, with my wife and uh, right after the birth of our first daughter. And he said, yeah, when you come back, you're going to take over. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're the keys. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. So um, it was great. Mm-hmm. We had a, a great kind of 10 year transition and I learned a ton in the process, but we didn't have any real marketing process, you know, yeah. the phone would ring some days and other days it wouldn't. And we didn't really know why it would one day and not the, uh, not the next. So that, yeah. that's kind of how I got started. Yeah. So out of uh, trial by fire, out of necessity, you know, it's kind of, unfortunately, or fortunately, I think, it, you know, a lot of, a lot of business owners, uh, a lot of business leaders end up in that situation. Just one day they kind of wake up and they realize they're running a company, they own a company, they've got mouse to feed, they've got business to, to maintain. I guess, what were some of your first steps? I mean, how did, how did you go about trying training yourself or learning about this profession? And I guess, how do you, maybe a little bit about how you distinguish between sales and marketing? What do you think works for some of these service-based businesses? What are, talk us through kind of the, your progress and your journey on this. Well, so when I started trying to learn all of this, it was really back at the, the very early days of the internet. And so, I mean, now it's so much easier. Mm-hmm. There's, I mean, you have podcasts like this that you can listen to and, and learn things. Yeah. So I went to the Barnes and Noble and bought a big thick book called the Portable MBA in Marketing. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I, I read that, that thing about 10 times mm-hmm. trying to make sense of it. It didn't make any sense to me. And it was really geared at, at you know, big corporate, you know, B2B kind of marketing, which I, you know, I, I've learned over the years that that selling a service 
is very, very different, particularly a service where, you know, at the end of the day, you're the product or, you know, mm-hmm. you and, and the team of leaders are looked upon as the, the product, you know, clients want contact with you. It's just a different environment because you, you have to not only sell them on this transformation that, that they need, but then you've got to, you know, go in the back room, change into your Superman outfit, come out and be the authority that they need that they'll listen to, you know, so that you can sort of diagnose their problem, prescribe a cure and, and hopefully implement the cure for them. That's a difficult thing to do if you use a lot of the sales tactics that are taught to people in product businesses that are perfectly appropriate in product businesses. But when you're the product as well as the salesperson, uh, you've got to be you've got to take a little bit of a different approach. Some yeah. of those product sort of sales tactics and techniques can really kind of erode the trust that you need to have later to be that trusted advisor to the client. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's almost uh, that kind of comedy skit where the person that seats you at the table, you know, turns around and comes out as the waiter, comes around, turns out to be the chef, turns around, and <laughs> you know, it's like you end up having to do everything. You have to sell it, you have to deliver it, you have to service it. And that does create a different dynamic. I mean, I guess how much have you found, or I guess talk to me a little bit about the difference between kind of the, the logical kind of tactic strategies, like the things that you do and the way you think about it versus the kind of the mindset and what you've noticed about what successful marketers or, or successful sellers do from uh, in these service-based businesses. What do they need to do above and beyond sort of the tactics? Like that, okay, well, here's, here are the techniques. What, what's the inner game that, they, that you find is common or at least inner games that you find successful for service-based sellers? Well, I think the, the first big mindset shift, because I, I think the, the mindset piece has to proceed yeah. All of the, what do I do? You know, mm-hmm. the tactical stuff. The mindset shift has to be that marketing is really my primary focus in the business. And for a, a lot of professionals, you know, they, they've they been educated. They spent all this time getting whatever credentials that they needed. They've built the business up. They probably are in the business because they fell in love with the work that the business delivers. Yeah. But at, you know, I think uh, it was Peter Drucker that said there's two functions of a business, marketing and innovation. Mm. And as the leader of the business, those are your two roles. You own those. And and so marketing is is critical. You know, and sales, I think, is is really the culmination of marketing. If you do your marketing well, you've pre-sold prospects. So yeah. we tell our clients yeah. that there are, there are really three sales that have to get made. And you, you need to start kind of beginning to, to think about it in this way. And, and the three sales are the very first one is that that the prospect recognizes and buys into the fact that they have a problem and that there's a solution (laughs) out there, right? Because I see a lot of, particularly in service businesses, people running around with this idea that there's, you know, they know that there's an optimal way to do something and, and, you know, God bless them for believing in that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I see them running around, you know, trying to convince people that don't either don't know that they have a problem or don't care that they have that problem. Yeah. That they need to fix it. And yeah. so that's the first sale you've got to make is you got to you got to sell them on the idea that they have a problem and that there is a solution. The second idea that you've got to sell them on is that you're their guy or you're their gal mm-hmm. because that eliminates all other competition. And if you can do that before you're across the table from them, life gets infinitely easier. You don't have to be a master salesperson. Yeah. And then, of course, the third sale is the one where we, you know, exchange money. And, and that's mm-hmm. the one most people pay any attention to. But if you can do if you get into the mindset that 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 I'm going to focus my time to go out and and market my business. And we can talk about what that is, you know, and kind of yep. get deeper on that. But that I'm going to spend my time to market my business so that I'm, I've made those first two sales before I'm ever across the table in a sales conversation with a prospect, then business is going to be just an easy game for you. Yeah. Well, and I like that idea because I see so many, so many companies or so many, you know, sellers, you know, whether they're founders or director of sale or, you know, CEOs who... They just want to get in front of people, and you know they're getting in front of people, like you said, that that don't even either uh, don't don't have the problem, don't see the problem that the seller thinks they have, uh, or don't doesn't they don't care about that problem right now? Like it's not this is not their most important problem, or they're not their biggest problem, and they don't want to spend time and energy yet. And, and now you're wasting you know, the one true limited resource that you have, which is your time. 
you know, in front of folks that are not going to buy, right? They're just not qualified folks for you to be talking to. So I like this idea of, of, of doing these other two first or selling these other two things before you even get in front of someone. So how do we do that? Like what's, what's the process for being able to make sure that the people you sit in front of are already pre-sold on your first two, first two sales objectives? Well, you, you, you got to begin by kind of empathizing with that future client of yours. What, what are they going through? You have to understand their world. And I think that's really difficult for a lot of us to do. I know it was hard for me for a long time. I could see my end of that selling process and, and what I wanted to get out of it. But I didn't really understand how potential client viewed it. And it wasn't until I really got clear on that that we started really making progress, both in my first business and, and in our current business. And, and so that that's really, I think, where it has to start. You have to be able to empathize with with what they're dealing with, not just as it relates to the thing that you're trying to sell to them, the service that you're going to deliver, but you've got to empathize with the whole person that yeah. is your prospect because you may be just a small part of their world and you've got to come to grips with the fact that you're not the most important person there. I mean, I think that's actually a, a good way to look at it. Yeah. You go, you go into it knowing, okay, well, I've made contact with this prospect and I'm number 50 on their list yeah. in order of priority. And I've got to now earn my way up the list yeah. by being valuable. And so, so I think if you kind of approach it with that mindset and then once you do that, that will begin to illuminate for you how you need to communicate with them, what information you need to share with them, how you need to educate them leading up to them being ready to do business with you. The the thing, the tactical thing that makes all of that really easy, and it's the one thing that I have to drag most of our clients kicking and <laughs> screaming towards, and, and that is getting focused on a, a single type of ideal client. You know, call it niching, call it target market, call it whatever you want. Uh, there's just tremendous resistance to that. And, and so, but, but that'll make it easier because now you're not trying to communicate with and, and understand and decipher what a whole range of people might perceive and, and what their experience is and how to educate them. You can actually get focused enough that you can make a difference. And um, yeah, happy to break down how we go through that. But that's kind of the first, I think, key tactical shift is to get really clear on who you're trying to, to work with. Yeah, I'll, I'll even take it one step farther. And and when we look at overall, kind of the overall challenges of, of scaling businesses, not, not only does getting really focused on who your core customer is, is in terms of sales and marketing, but actually from, you know, operations, from delivery, from service design to billing, like all these things become so much easier when you start to really zero in on a particular, you know, core customer or target customer, because now, you know, you're now you're not trying to create 15 different versions of everything. You can just focus on the, on the one main scenario and the one main type of customer that has this particular type of problem that you're solving for, like everything in the business becomes easier. So this not only helps the sales side, it actually helps delivery and, and every other portion of the of it. So how, uh, yeah, I'm curious, how, walk us through uh, that that process or, or the stages of helping a company identify who their target customer or who their core customer is. Well, the, I mean, the first and biggest one, honestly, is getting the, the business owner, getting the entrepreneur to believe that they can <laughs> focus because yeah. the fear, you know, fear gets in the way. And, and I've been doing this long enough you know, I've been doing this now almost a decade mm -hmm. and I know that it is a, even though I don't believe it's a warranted fear, I believe that it is a real fear on the part of almost every business owner. The And the fear is that if I focus on a single group of people, then I'm somehow giving up lots of other opportunity elsewhere. And theoretically, yes, there is a market that is so small that it won't support your business, but I have yet to find it. <laughs> exactly. Like, we'll worry about that one. We can always broaden a little bit, but I will worry about that when well, we get there. Sure. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I tell people is, look, if you've got a potential client coming at you waving money with, you know, the check is already written out in your name and it's got a lot of zeros on it that make you happy, cash the check yeah, and well, help Yeah, exactly. Them. You know? <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about turning business away, yes, but what we are exactly. talking about is giving a focus to your marketing so that you can actually stay sane and you can make progress. And it's it's so funny because when we finally get them over this hump, and it usually takes us about 30 or 45 days to really get them honed in and believing in it and begin to kind of start rolling it out, a switch goes off in their brains and they start seeing opportunities to connect with the exact type of people that would be best for them to have as clients. 
Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, like they, they were blind to these opportunities. They were all right around them within reach. But the minute that we get that focus and they buy into it, all of a sudden it's like we just lit a match under them and they're just going to zoom because that focus allows them to work so much more quickly. Yeah. Well, and it, it's just that that pattern identification, about, you know, getting getting that reticular activation part of your brain, just think, thinking about where can I find more things that look like this? You know, you, you do that well. You make that a, a fairly specific pattern to look for. And yeah, it, it starts coming up all over the place. Uh, it really yeah, is powerful exactly. when you get it right. We just we just took a, a new client through this and uh, he's got a consulting business and he was going his target market was sort of the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, any business that, you know, was mm-hmm. in business was a good candidate for him. And we he had a really compelling story around e-commerce. He had run a successful e-commerce business before. It had gotten into some trouble. He had turned it around. And the minute that we kind of connected those two dots then and, and he got focused on that market, we're helping him produce a podcast. And so he immediately started booking podcast guests. Well, he booked, within about a week, he booked nine guests for his yet to be released podcast. He's kind of doing interviews ahead of time. Well, seven out of those nine, he was able to book webinars where he's now going to use those as lead generation. He's going to go get the opportunity to speak to the the audiences of those seven people. Yeah. So he's going to, and he's already started doing some of these. I mean, he's getting appointments out of it. He's generated just within about a week, a couple hundred leads. Yep. Yeah. You know, no, it's, it's, because he it's had that magic. focus where he was, yeah, yeah, he was stalled for a couple of years before that. Yeah. And what are some of the other challenges that you've seen in terms of, you know, helping people identify their, that, that core customer, their target market? I mean, when, what, what are the roadblocks that you typically run into or that clients run into in terms of making some of those decisions? You know, the biggest one is just not having the courage to get specific enough. Yeah. The tendency is is to want to fudge it, and even as we narrow down, it's still to want it to keep it a little a little too big. Mm-hmm. When you can narrow it down to where you can really clearly and crisply articulate the the real pain that mm-hmm. those people are facing, and it is a real pain that you know that they recognize, you've now made your job so much easier. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's the I think the big thing is is really trying to get that that circle drawn tightly enough around the right group of people. Some other challenges that run into that, that we'll, we'll run into with these that will cause us to tweak and, and adjust the definition. You know, if it's a group of people that are particularly hard to reach for whatever reason, that might not be a good target market for you. And there are groups of people that are just hard to reach. You know, it's it's rare that we find that, but we have run across that in the past. And so sometimes just a little tweak or a pivot to a slightly different but related group can make all the difference. Yeah. yeah. So, and once a company has figured out their target audience or their target customer or core customer, what what are some of the sort of strategies that you help them or that you suggest they look at? Is this uh, you know content marketing? Are you doing SEO? Are you like what what are the what are the tools that people can use once they figured out their their targets in terms of actually marketing to them the right sort of message, right offer, so that you can you know effectively reach them. And, and convert them down this sales process. Sure. So I, I believe in, in focusing your marketing investments and whether that's an investment of time, energy, or money mm-hmm. on things that aren't likely to change in the near term. Okay. Uh, right now, marketing is going through dramatic and rapid change. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, so you mentioned SEO. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great, but we turn, generally tell our clients, don't invest a whole lot of time there. Let's let's create things where we'll get SEO as a strategic byproduct. Mm-hmm. But let's not make that our focus because you can't control what Google will do next. Yeah. The days of being able to game the system are gone. And and so we don't know when, when the next change is going to come that will change that game. Yeah. Same thing can happen with all of the online advertising platforms now. You know, if I'm not saying don't use them, we don't tell our clients don't use them at all, but just understand that once you get into the machine that is Facebook or Google ads, be ready to be in a constant state of change in how you market. And so we like to build a foundation on things that don't change. We start with getting, like I said, getting really clear on who that ideal client is. From that, we build what we call a a target 100 list. So we'll go out and create a list. It might be 50, it might be 100, it might be 150 Mm -hmm. target clients. And what we generally advise our clients is, you know, and for most service businesses, that's a good number to have as a working list. If you've always got around 100, give or take, that's probably all the leads you can handle at any given time. Yeah. And now these are 100, these are 100 companies or 100 100 names of people and companies. What does this 100 list consist of? Generally, it's going to be 100 names of 
of distinct clients. So we, maybe you would call it buying units. So it could be it could be distinct companies. If there were three or four sales opportunities within a, a large company, um, you might include each of those as as a separate <laughs> one. Got I mean, it. don't get too so caught if they up had in different that. offices just, or different divisions. That they, those could be different units, but kind of they could be sure. You know, don't get too caught up in into the details. If if you've got roughly around a hundred people mm-hmm. that you're doing some very focused marketing on, then you know you should be fine. And and so from there, then we work with our clients to build a, a platform, uh, a media platform, typically a podcast so that they've got a place to invite people from that list. Yeah. And we we use a process we call podcast prospecting, where we actually will go out and invite those potential clients or people who can refer us to potential clients onto a podcast, do an interview like this, mm-hmm. build a relationship without any of the pressure of sales mm-hmm. so that the next time you place a call to that person, they know you, they like you, they trust you, they'll answer the phone, they'll respond to your email. And at the same time we're doing that, we're creating really great content that will nurture all of those people and anyone else that's in your database and in your network. And it'll help position you as a market leader and an influencer in that market. Yeah. So we, we, we use that to kind of get the most bang for the buck because most of our clients don't have any more bandwidth, you know, within their calendar to, to be able to do more marketing. So all they've got to do is show up and have two or three or four of these conversations each month with people that they ultimately want to do business with and start these relationships. And so it's a very efficient way to do it. So we start there yeah. because you, you accomplish a lot right there. You get some prospecting done and you get this evergreen content that you need to be able to nurture these relationships. Then we also get positioning done. Yeah. Then we look at, okay, how are we going to convert these people into a sales process? How are we going to educate them? And the next thing we want to put in place is a, a presentation that is designed to get a prospect to commit a focused amount of time where they can get deeply educated on the problem that they've got and the solution that's available. And then we give them a next step, which is to book an appointment with you mm-hmm. or with you know someone at your company. And so then that can be delivered either as a you know, an on-demand video on your website as an on-demand webinar, a live webinar, an in-person seminar. Uh, you can deliver it any number of ways. But once we've got that built and it's a single presentation so we can begin to track the performance of it and improve it over time, now we've got a way for people to come into a sales conversation, into your your more one-on-one sales process and they're educated. At the end of that, they should be pre-sold to the point that you're their guy or you're their gal. Yeah. And talk to me about how you kind of focus or identify issues, topics to weave into this content and then the things that you you develop the presentations around. Is there any uh, you know, insights or strategies that you've seen that work well in terms of, you know, finding the pain points or the hot topics or the, you know, the issues that are most kind of at the top of the audience's list in terms of challenges they're grappling with that are going to call it, that are going to drive engagement, drive signups and stuff. I mean, how do you, how do you do that? Most most of the time, you know, the business owners that we're working with, they know. Yeah. I mean, they because they're working with the clients. And if, you know, if it's a larger company and they don't know, usually we can talk with the salespeople or with some of the folks who are, are leading fulfillment and actually solving problems once somebody becomes a client. I mean, all this information is it's there and it's within your organization and it might be within your head, but sometimes it's very difficult for you to see what's valuable and what's not. And that's, it's, that's one of the things we hear from clients over and over again. It's like they knew it all, but they needed somebody to look at it from the outside objectively to identify which pain points were going to be most valuable and, you know, and then how to organize all of that. So we take them through a process where we will, you know, we'll get them to document what they think the pains are. And then we'll spend about 90 minutes on a call, really kind of diving deep into each of those areas, understanding how, you know, how they actually deliver a solution there and, and what the results ultimately are. And, and by the end of that, we'll usually have a pretty dialed in picture of, of what the pain points are and, and then how to message those. Yeah. Well, and I like this because it creates a system, right? It's a, a, it's a, uh, a, a tool that can be used again and again. I love the idea that you can improve it, that uh, you can you can take the feedback you're getting, look at the data you're collecting around it, figure out what's working, what's not, when are people dropping off? You know, how can I uh, keep people on longer, testing uh, different versions of things? I mean, then n- now you've got something that's a real asset rather than something that, you know, is just a one and done kind of marketing, uh, you know, a marketing tool. It's really a system that has has a life that you can you can extend. Yeah. And that, that's really, you know, that is our whole focus when we work with a company is we want to build for them a, a system that 
they're not going to have to really significantly alter for the next decade yeah. once it's in place. They can enhance it. You know, once we've built the basic system, if they want to enhance it with things like like ads or SEO or anything else to drive more people to it, great. That's fantastic. But the base foundation is going to be unchanged. Yeah. You know, the other one I wanted to um, kind of get your opinion on or ask is um, certainly I have found as I've gotten more focused uh, in uh, the work that I do with the types of clients that I work with, even if I end up meeting somebody who is not in my target, the fact that I'm so specific in my target, I would say, you know, nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10, they will make an introduction. <laughs> you know, So even though that person is not necessarily my perfect target, they're like, oh, you know what? You should talk to Bob because Bob, it seems like really the kind of person you, sh- you know, that would benefit from from talking to you. And so this whole, well, I want to, I want to be able to sell everything to everyone, you know, even, even if you're getting introduced or, or you're talking with someone who's not your, your market still being focused can serve you well because it helps with that referral side of a thing. I'm, I'm just kind of curious how that's come up for you and how you've seen that play out in the clients you've worked with. Yeah. I mean, everything, everything improves with specificity. I mean, that what you just described happens all the time. And, you know, the other thing that, that I think is, is most fun to watch with this is when we're working with someone who has been kind of taking every kind of client that will come along and it's been driving them crazy when they begin to focus and realize that by focusing the number of different types of problems they're trying to solve now has shrunk down, Yeah, you know, and, and they're actually able to, to create some really innovative solutions and they're having fun doing it and all of the headaches that they had trying to deliver to all of these different types of clients begin to go away. Yeah. You know, it improves, but it improves everything. I mean, you'll get, you'll get referrals like that. You'll get introductions to influencers. You'll get introductions to go and speak at, at conferences where that specific type of prospect goes because you're now for them. When before you weren't for anybody, it's not that you were for everybody. You weren't for anybody. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So tell me more about when you engage with clients, how does your process work? What, uh, you know, how do you kind of work them through, you know, getting clarity, building the system? What, tell us about what it would be like to work with you and, and, uh, how that engagement structured. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody would like to do everything all at once, but I think Albert Einstein said, (laughs) God created time so that everything didn't happen all at once. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And we like to look at at this whole process in phases because as you implement parts of this, you're going to get, you're going to learn more and you're going to better understand your market. And those are things we'll plug in. So when we work with someone, we take them through a process we call the growth audit, which is basically looking at at all of their messaging, their current marketing website, any email marketing, social media, anything that they're doing, print, whatever it is. And we're looking for a few things. We're number one, looking to see, do they have a a clearly defined ideal client? And if not, we're going to take them through a process during that audit to get there. Do they have a clearly defined offer? Because that that's to me, if you get those two things right, that's probably 80% of the battle in business is getting that target market and the offer correct. And, and a lot of things can get taken care of right then and there. And then we, uh, you know, we'll go through and basically make, make recommendations, essentially write a prescription for based on where you are, here are the biggest priorities for you to address going forward. And, and then from there, we'll start to map out a, um, an implementation plan with the client. Typically the uh, probably 90% of our clients don't have any mechanism for following up with anyone that comes into their world that isn't ready to do business today. Yeah, so exactly. the first thing we'll want to put in place is, um, you know, some type of a media platform and probably nine times out of 10, that's a podcast just because it's easy for the the entrepreneur to execute on. They don't have to write anything. They can just talk and have a conversation. And because we can use it in so many different ways. I mean, it kind of checks the box for content for your social media. It checks the box for your SEO and, and content marketing. It checks the box because we do email marketing off of it, relationship building and prospecting, referrals because we can interview referral partners. So we get a lot done right there. Um, so that's usually the first thing because the low hanging fruit are the people that are already in your world that you've just ignored. And often we can reactivate them fairly quickly if we can warm them up with a little bit of content very quickly after that, put in place that presentation Mm -hmm. and then begin to invite them to that presentation. There's almost always some hidden clients that just they want to do business with you, but they don't quite know enough or know how to take the next step. And uh, and so we can get things going that way. Once those things are in place and we've got a sales process that it's working. And a lot of times when we work with a firm, uh, particularly if it's a, a smaller firm and the 
founder or the owner, the principal isn't real confident at selling or they don't have a process for it. One of the things we'll help coach them through is how to get a sales conversation that's easy, that feels authentic, that's, you know, not, it doesn't rely on them being a master salesperson. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and get that in place. And then once we've got all of those pieces, then we'll go back and look at, okay, now we've got a system to receive leads. Let's go now pump leads into it. Yeah. I like you it. You know, and that can be, that, you know, we usually start with referral and kind of, we have a concept we call the attention ladder. We start folks off on, on referrals, get those scaled up. A lot of times that's everything that, that the business needs. Yep. If we need to go beyond that, then you can get into paid media, whether it's direct mail or print or online or whatever. And from there go into PR. Yeah. Excellent. Steve, if people want to find out more about, uh, about your systems, about, uh, your podcast, about the books, what's the best way to get more information? Yeah, Bruce, we've actually set up a page just for your listeners. And, uh, if they go to unstoppableceo.net slash S U S, they can get a free copy of my latest book, the exponential network strategy, which actually talks about how we use interviews to go out and build referral relationships and, and connect with prospects. Yeah. Um, and so you can kind of get that step-by-step -step process there and uh, they can find me at unstoppableceo.net. Perfect. Steve, that's that perfect lead for uh, people to get to. I love that you've personalized it. It's a smart move. And I encourage everyone uh, who's interested in this, who's looking to grow their grow their business, scale their company, go check this out. I think the, the marketing and sales side is often the most difficult one. And you know, Steve makes it easier. So grab that content learn how to do that. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. A lot of great tips in here. Valuable, valuable stuff. So I, um, uh, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Bruce. It's been fun. You've been listening to Scaling Up Services with business coach Bruce Eckfeld. To find a full list of podcast episodes, download the tools and worksheets, and access other great content, visit the website at scalingupservices.com. And don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter at scalingupservices.com slash newsletter.